I think it's hard for some folks. They're a little incredulous when, you know, the, the line, well, you know, police started with slave patrols and catching or, you know, capturing so-called runaway slaves. Right. And is how true is that story? And is that like I think people are like, no, police must have been around for forever. That's no, we've always had police. It's like very natural to assume we've always had them. And then there's an incredulity around. No, they can't. That's an awful origin story. What do you mean? They were maybe they're good guys. Um, what have you learned yeah. in your research? I mean, it, it's it, it. The idea of kind of like how to enforce laws in society goes back much further than the the modern concept concept of police. So it would be wrong to say that policing started with slave patrols, but it would be accurate to say that policing in the American South started with slave patrols. And it is direct enough that, for example, the St. Louis police literally are a direct continuation of a slave patrol. There's no debate about that, no argument about this. It is historically there, what was initially a patrol to catch slaves became the St. Louis Police Department. Um, and there's a lot of, and this is across in large part the American South, and it's it's spread outside of there, but it's specific, it's very particular in the South. One of the things you saw, the slave patrols um, was their use of dogs. Um, and they would use dogs in order to catch slaves and in order to brutalize them. And a big part of the kind of culture of fear that stopped slave revolts was the fear of being torn apart by these dogs that the patrols would use. And one of the things that kicked off everything that happened in Ferguson and was it 2014, um, was the, the Ferguson police use police dogs to brutalize suspects who are virtually all black um, and are never white. Um, yeah. And use them in a lot of these same ways. If you read descriptions of how slave patrols would use dogs to brutalize black people in the 1840s and 50s, and you read some of the shit Ferguson police was doing when Obama was in office. Yeah, they're the stories. So I wouldn't say policing started with slave patrols, but I would say that slave patrols are the origin point of one type of American policing that is extremely influential. Um, now, there's other aspects of like where policing came from and, and including like a lot of policing originated in parts of they not have a history of slavery, right? Because there there were states that were never slave states, but they had forms of law enforcement. So I, I don't want to like Did you say in, in Europe. No, in the states too. Like there, there, oh, okay. there are states in the U.S. that have never been slave states, but had forms of law enforcement, you know, from the beginning in them. Oregon, right. for example, was never a slave state because it was too racist to have slaves. Right? Oregon <laughs> didn't say, have like, surprising. Yeah, but, but because it was too racist for slaves, not as a good thing. It's not right, right, right. Some, there were some places that banned slavery because they were too racist to have anybody who wasn't white there, and Oregon is one of these places. Um, but nor still very deeply tied with particularly anti-black racism. And I would say probably the best, I mean, there's a couple of really good anecdotes. One of them is that the Portland police in the 1920s um, had a police vigilante unit that the Portland police gave badges and guns to handpicked citizens who were by the Ku Klux Klan to carry out you can guess what they did. And this happened in other parts of Oregon an awful lot and all over the country. A huge in the 20s of Sharon police chiefs in the United States were also Klansmen. Um, this, and this is across the nation. It's incredibly endemic. And the KKK had a significant impact on the way law enforcement was done. Um, Wait, can I, yeah, this, I is, know. this is fascinating. No, I have a question because I'm really yeah. interested. Do you know, I have no idea, but I remember this was a part of, like I grew up in a big church and there was a police chaplain program, which is, mm -hmm. And like, when did that start in the United States? This like weird practice of like, we're just going to like bring some pastors on ride alongs and they kind of hang out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I tell They're going to bless this arrest. I could, and I don't know if it's dealt with, I don't recall it being dealt with in the book, but in general, if you're interested in where a lot of our problems with policing came from. There's a very good book mm -hmm. called The End of Policing by I think Alex Vitale is the name of the mm -hmm. author. And it's yeah, not only on you show. can purchase it. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's available for free. Um, yeah, it's a, on no, a, so as an ebook. Can, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and that, that deals with a lot of stuff. I, I, now, I don't know about the that, history of police chaplains, but I one thing that does interest me is 
the degree to which religion and policing are tied in the United States. But go when you go outside of um, where slave patrols were kind of more the origin of policing. There's an at, there's a huge amount of kind of Puritan values that all stayed into the enforcement of laws, um, and particularly the enforcement of laws that were designed to crack down on deviance. Um, yeah. and you can see a lot like what done and has been done to gay people and stuff uh, in the yeah, United I, States. I don't want to conflate the KKK with the church writ large, but it is interesting that you point out there's like a history of police sort of handpicking people from groups that they are okay with being like, oh, you can kind of mm -hmm. just come hang with us. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. There's, there's a Venn diagram yeah. there. Um, Robert, you're kind of cutting out. So if, if we're like, what? Um, that's why. Um, but uh, I, I think what when Alex Vitali was on the show, the thing that he crystallized for me is the way that along with sort of like the development of like capitalism and, you know, property rights and all that stuff, that police are a way to sort of enforce the inequality that like all mm -hmm. of the, you know, he particularly looking, looking at cities, you know, all of the, whether it's the deficit in housing and education or, you know, um, or, or, or joblessness that, well, that's okay. If you just have a giant police force to keep everyone away from complaining about it or to stop them from stealing food when they're hungry or stealing something to sell when they need money. Like if you just maintain this giant police force, you never actually have to deal with the like inherent inequities that capitalism and, you know, cre that creates, right? Like that, that, mm -hmm. that is what it is. And so it goes hand in hand with that. And I think that's, um, I haven't finished the behind the police series, but I'm very excited uh, to hear how that also works into it. Um. I think uh, the best way to know what is per, what the people who are in power in society aren't willing to say they endorse, but do endorse, is to look at what provokes outrage from them and what does not. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden. Mm -hmm outraged by looting outraged by looting you know something <laughs> joe biden's never said a word about to my knowledge um throughout the first decade or so of the u.s occupation of iraq a series of devices was sold to the u.s military and the iraqi military that was designed to sniff out bombs and was in reality fake it didn't do anything and huge numbers of people died as a result of bombs that were set off in civilian areas because a company had grifted the US military and the Iraqi government tens of millions of dollars to make these fake bomb detectors. Not a word, because looting of American shops isn't supposed to happen. That's somebody upsetting the system. But a shady military contractor greasing palms and bribing people and profiting off of death and destruction in a in a in, a, in an impoverished distant land that's supposed to happen so why would mm -hmm. we get outraged at have you become a patron yet patreon.com slash bituation room is where you can directly support this show and help me make it raged by looting you know <laughs> the word about to my knowledge but i do best doing this